so he's going too slow in the X5. Everyone's going too slow today. But he's got two exhausts, he probably goes pretty fast. repairs and information. Well last episode we looked at ways to increase the performance of your BMW V8 and we looked at three things that make it a lot worse. First one being a cone filter which some people call the cold air intake but it slurps up hot air and reduces horsepower by about 50. Second one was an electric fan for the on the main radiator to reduce drag on the viscous coupled fan. But the viscous coupled fan is highly efficient and doesn't lose you any horsepower, whereas using an electric fan puts excess load on the alternator and reduces your horsepower again. And the last one being fitting an M60 manifold on the M62 and M62 TUB engines which completely messes up the performance of those cars. It really makes a mess of those. So today, I'm going to show you the two things that really do make a difference and makes this car, instead of being quite pedestrian, unfortunately, which is like a lot of E31s are, into being a bit more fun and going a bit like this. pretty impressive. 0 to 60 of about six seconds. Let's have a look at how I managed to achieve it. But we're not going to be looking in the engine today, no, we'll be looking further back. And to do that, the first thing we've got to do is stick it up on ramps. So let's get on with it. Right, here we go. This is the original differential out of my 840Ci with the M62. And on it, it says 2.81. That means it has a ratio of 2.81 to 1. What's that mean in real life? Well, let's get it up here. These things weigh an absolute ton, by the way. So I've drawn a mark here, got one here. I'll turn this two and a bit times. So here we go. One, two, almost three and there we are back up there again so that's 2.81 turns of the input shaft this is connected to prop shaft and through to the gearbox and these are connected to the wheels so for every 2.81 turns off the input shaft the output shaft will turn one now if we had a 3.15 to one this would turn 3.15 turns for every turn of the output shaft so for a given gear and road speed, the engine turns faster, the higher the ratio you have. So for the difference between 2.81 and 3.15 will mean that this is turning faster for a given road speed and a given gear. And that means the engine's producing more power. And that's the big thing about uh, higher ratio differentials is you get more power to the wheels and you, thus you get better acceleration but there always is a trade-off. There's always a compromise with differentials and we'll get into that. One of the important things is that you don't change through too many gears while you're <laughs> trying to reach your 80 mile an hour speed from the line. And of course, every gear change you make, you lose speed, uh, lose inertia. So you don't want a differential that's sort of six to one or something like that, uh, because you'll be going through all five gears by the by the time you've got to 80 miles an hour. And of course, the other downside with very high ratio differentials is at cruising at 80 miles an hour, you don't want the revs to be up at 5,000 RPM. 
gets a bit noisy, wears things out a bit. Okay, okie dokie. So the one in my car now is from a 750 E32 7 Series, um, built from about 88 to 93, and that's a 3.15. And the other difference is it's a limited slip differential. Now, I might be able to demonstrate this if I can grab hold of this hard enough. There we go. There we go. So I can turn the input shaft and that output shaft is not moving at all. And so you can imagine that that one is and it's going around twice as fast as it would do normally. And uh, so if that side lost traction, so your right hand wheel lost traction, this one, the right hand, uh, the left hand wheel do absolutely nothing at all. So that's why when you're in snow, you just get one wheel spinning and doing nothing. With a limited slip differential, if one of the half shafts stops turning, then friction plates come into operation and they'll start putting energy into the one which has stopped. Um, it's a 25% differential, so 25% of the energy will go into the other half shaft. And so you won't get the situation where you're just sitting there with one wheel spinning. It also means that when you accelerate off the line, you don't have the same situation where you have one wheel spin and the other one doing nothing and you don't go anywhere. So with a limited slip differential, you get power to both half shafts, even if you lose traction on the other one. Now that doesn't seem to be too great a thing apart from in snow, but it is, it really makes a huge difference on the cornering of ability of a car. And that's one of the things that uh, amazed me with a limited slip differential is the cornering ability was so much better. It really was planted. And of course, when you go, go really sharply around corners, you lose all the weight on one of the driving wheels. And of course, then you can have that wheel spin up a bit. And of course, you lose traction on the corner. Uh, whereas a limited slip differential, you keep power to both wheels. But it's more than that. It isn't just a matter of losing traction. It really does push you around corners with a limited slip differential. OK, so this is the original um, E31 differential. What do you have to do to fit uh, E32 differential to an 840? You have to change the input shaft and I believe the output, uh, sorry, the input flange and possibly the output flanges, I'd have to check with Lee because I didn't do this, weighs too much, I can't even pick it up. And the rear cover, because the rear cover is has the suspension for the differential on it. So those things were changed. It's not an onerous task. I think it took Lee about an hour to change them over. And so 250 quid, this uh, the E32 differential cost, so little money for such a big performance gain. It really does make a big difference. Um, so yeah, well worth the money. Only problem is, is of course that a few people know about this now and e, uh, E32 750 differentials are getting a lot harder to find. Also, I believe in the States, not only did they do a 3.15, they did a 3.64, which is an even more aggressive differential but that does have it downsides and I can show you that in practice using a gear simulator which I wrote absolutely years ago when I was looking at the difference between 740i's and 740i sports um, because the 740i sport has a 3.15 whereas the standard models don't. Here's a conundrum for you Let's say that the 740 and the 840 weigh exactly the same. They've got exactly the same engine power, same gearbox, same differential. Why does an 840 Ci go faster? Because it does. It accelerates faster than a 740. And I'll tell you that about that in a minute. And it's nothing to do with engines or prop shafts or differentials or half shafts or, or the aerodynamics. It really is down to gearing again, but it's nothing to do with any of these parts at all. Yep, yeah, bit of a conundrum for you. And you can think about that while I show you the simulation of different differentials on the same car. Now I'll get, get the blooming thing back up on the rack and I'll tell you what, these things, these things weigh an absolute ton. Well, we've had a Good look at that differential that I've got in the shed there, 2.81 to 1. 
and uh, can sort of compare the operation to a 3.15 to 1 limited slip. Uh, we we'll ignore the limited slip capability of the 3.15 in my 840 at the moment. That's irrelevant for what we're talking about, which is just really uh, overall gear ratios. Now, it's very difficult to try and visualise what a gear ratio change makes. So we change the ratio of the differential and it affects obviously the overall gearing of the engine to the road speed. So it's very difficult to visualize. Now, Woof has got a site, a fantastic engineer, and he's got a technical section and it gives you all the gear ratios of all the gearboxes and power outputs from engines and stuff like that. It's very useful. And uh, I used that information many years ago, 10 years ago, when I wrote a program for it um, to produce a simulator. So that's what I did is I produced a simulator which runs on a PC. So I just open him up. There we go. There's a simulator and download that from MeekNet. Details will be in the description. Um, it's a zip file, so the computer, your computer will complain about it, but you can trust me, honest. Download, installer, install it, and off you go. And this is what you get. Okay, so we've got two, we've got the rev gauge and we've got this speedo from my 840, and we've got a number of controls around the place as well. Uh, so this one here, we've got the gear, which we want to be in, so we can change gear. I'm in first gear now. Ratio of gearbox, uh, of differential, sorry, differential ratio. We can choose from six different uh, di different ratios and which gearbox you've got. Um, so all the V8s have a five-speed ZF apart from the six-speed manuals. And uh, you can choose that six-speed manual um, rather than uh, using the ZF box. But for the sort of, for most of us, it's a five-speed ZF box. So... Um, you don't have to worry about all of that. It'll load it so we can press press to load and you can load E31, E32, E39 or E38 presets. Um, the reason for that is, is that the difference between overall gear ratio between, say, the E31 and the E38 is the wheel size. Yeah, the wheel size, of course, has got an effect, has an effect on overall gearing between RPM and road speed. See, the bigger the wheel is, the slower it turns for a given speed. So that's why the E38 is different. And that's also why, given the same weight, same engine, gearbox, dif uh, differential, and all the rest of it, a 740 accelerates slower than an 840. And that's just because it's got bigger wheels. So its overall ratio is slightly lower. So there you go, that was that conundrum sorted out. Anyway, you can load the presets. I've loaded them for E31, E32 and E39. Um, so we've now got a differential ratio of 2.81, which was standard in the M62 840Ci. And what we can do <coughs> is we can whiz the rev gauge around and see what effect that has on the speedo. Speedo overreads by about 4% as standard on the 840. In fact, all BMWs up until the very late ones uh, overread by about 4%. And we can change that percentage if we like, so and go down to 0% if we want to see absolute accurate speed. But I prefer just seeing what I'm going to see on the Speedo while I'm driving the car. OK, all of that aside, we've got five-speed gearbox, uh, we've got the standard differential ratio of 2.81 to 1, and we've got first gear. So let's rev up and see how fast we go in first gear. Now, the ZF box changes gear at 5,500 RPM, no matter how far you put your foot down on the throttle, hit the kick down or anything like that, put it in manual and first gear, 5,500 is going to change gear whether you like it or not. In fact, you could actually put the car in manual, stick it in first gear, uh, so it indicates uh, one on the dashboard, stick your foot down, and it'll just change gear for you up until about third gear. And uh, 5,500 RPM in third gear, you're moving along pretty fast. Anyway, that aside, so we give 5,500 as our top rev limit. So let's whizzer up to 5,500. 
doing 44 miles an hour or so in first gear. That's, that's a pretty tall gear, that one is. Okay, so we'll remember that, 43, change gear into second gear. Um, remember 43, but drop it back down to 43. 3,500, great gearing for um, M62, because we're still in the power band. M60, bit out of the power band, I'm afraid. 3,000, 3,500, pretty feet. We'll reach 4,000, and then the power all comes back in again. So there we go, 3,500, we're in second gear. Let's reach 5,500. 70 miles an hour in second gear. It's, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? But this is also the same reason why the 840 accelerates so badly. Such tall gears in it. They really are tall gears. I mean, we're talking second gear and 70 miles an hour. That's absolutely crazy. Right, we remember uh, 70 miles an hour. Drop it into third gear. Back down to 70, there we go. Getting closer to the power band on the M60 now. We've got 3,800 or so. Uh, yeah, more or less in the power band. M62 is in the power band. And let's whip up the revs until we reach 80 miles an hour, which is sort of general merging speed onto a motorway or a highway. Slightly faster than the traffic's moving, or at least equal to it. And uh, that's more or less what I do every morning, twice a day. Whizzer right up until we hit the red line. Uh, sometimes, not, of course, not always. No, 80 miles an hour, and then you can just cruise it. So I usually go first, second, third gear, drop it down into fifth or drive. And so we're at 80 miles an hour. And with the standard differential, we'll be pottling along at 2200 rpm making about 30 horsepower and it's a bit, bit lackluster performance at that sort of revs which is why of course you put the throttle down it'll change uh, gears for you down a bit so there we go that's the standard sort of thing you see from an 840 ci m62 of course so the m60 has a slightly different ratio differential 2.93 I think so you can do the same uh, simulation for the M6840 and you can do the same si simulation for E38s and E39s righty ho now what happens if we change gear ratio to be really aggressive so let's sit, stick something crazy in there 3.96 which is the the highest ratio differential that I have on my si uh, simulator. Of course, you can get four over four to one ratio gear uh, differentials. Right, let's see what happens. Well, first of all, what is the car's top speed? Well, it's 155 in this, isn't it, Tim? Uh, not with that uh, ratio gear box, uh, differential. No, it's uh, about 139 miles an hour. So, yeah, we've now not got 155 mile an hour supercar. We've got a 130 something mile an hour supercar, about the same as a 116. So yeah, not that impressive. The other thing, the other downside to having a really aggressive um, differential is the fact that we can, sure, we can whiz through the gears as normal. We get up to 5,500, 30 miles an hour this time. So we remember 30 miles an hour, 3,500 RPM, a whizzer up, and we reach 50 miles an hour in second gear. Third gear, we reach 72 miles an hour, which just isn't quite fast enough to merge. We want that extra 10 miles an hour. And of course, we drop down to fourth gear at this point at 70 miles an hour. Let's stick it in fourth gear, uh, 70 miles an hour or so. Yep, that's a pretty long gear. So the problem is, is at this point, to do your merge between 70 and 80 miles an hour, you're in a really long gear and you just haven't got that acceleration anymore. So even ha having a shorter gear ratio uh, of say 2.81, 2.93, you're actually gonna get to 80 miles an hour quicker than this really aggressive differential for two reasons. Uh, first of all, you've got to go through four gears, uh, sorry, three gears, first to second to third to fourth, and each gear change, you lose power, of course, the, the ignition uh, is retarded quite significantly, 
uh, so that this doesn't get stress put on the gearbox as it changes gear. So you lose power, it changes gear, it brings the power up again, and so on. And of course, the very long ratio you've got um, between uh, in fourth gear, trying to get you from 70 to 80. Now that, that will slow you down quite significantly, which is why there's a sweet spot with differentials and why I went for 3.15. Well, apart from the fact that we could get hold of them. So let's stick in a 3.15. So there we go, 3.15 differential. First of all, have we still got 155 mile an hour supercar? Let's go up to 5,000 RPM. Yeah, no problem at all. Gear to that, that ratio is about, well, it's 175 miles an hour. So we still got 155 mile an hour supercar. So thumbs up for the first one. What about whizzing through the gears and getting onto the motorway at 80 miles an hour? Right, stick it in first gear. Let's see how long first gear is. 39 miles an hour, that's not too bad. Second gear, uh, what we got? We've got just over 60 miles an hour. Third gear, 90 miles an hour. So yeah, if you really want to reach 90 miles an hour very quickly, use a 3.15 and you just stick your foot down the automatic box will change gear for you. I used to use the manual change. Not quite sure right? why. Um, and you hit 90 miles an hour much quicker than a really aggressive differential. Now, 3.15 is the sweet spot for a couple of things. First of all, is your cruising. So let's uh, drop down the revs, stick it into fifth gear. What have we got at 80 miles an hour, sort of the cruising speed? We've got 2,500 RPM, and that's very comfortable. Cruising speed, uh, cruising uh, RPM with a more aggressive ratio gear uh, differential, 80, 3,200 RPM. That's getting a bit noisy and sort of increasing wear on the engine and so on. Still, it's not too bad. But of course, not forgetting you don't have the 155 mile an hour supercar anymore. You've got 135. And eventually that 118 M Sport will go past you. <laughs> it will once you reach that top speed. So, yeah, there we go. That's why I've chosen a 3.15. Also, the addition of the limited slip is very helpful. It gets you around corner so much better. And of course, in wet weather, you don't spin wheels up or anything. I've been asked many times, I mean, you've got all this horsepower. Why can't you burn rubber? Well, it's because it is very long geared. I mean, it was designed, BMW designed this car to be, well, what they say now it's meant to be a GT, you know, a Grand Tourer or something, a real cruiser. Well, I mean, it doesn't look like a cruiser, does it? It, it really looks like it should be moving. So, yeah, they really did shoot themselves in the foot a bit with all the gear ratios they used. It should have been a lot more aggressive. And then they'd probably sell, sell quite a few more of them. But anyway, that's a very quick look at why you choose differential ratios. I mean, a lot of people have differentials made by uh, specialist companies. Stick any sort of gears you like in them up to a certain extent. I think, well... We could have a, ooh, almost a five to one ratio differential. Now I'm going to shoot off the line with that. Yeah, yeah, shoot off the line to about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> then you have in fourth gear, uh, so lost all your acceleration. Yeah, it is pretty impressive doing your naught to 60, that's for sure. And, uh, but of course, up at um, 80 miles an hour, you're about 3,500, 3,600, 700 RPM, and that's getting noisy, and, and it's sort of where it's going to be increased. What's the downside to having a 3.15 differential? Well, I use a bit more petrol, and that's it, really. That really is the downside to it. Um, compared to the 2.81, I'm losing probably about 3 or 4 mpg. It's difficult to say because I spend half the day at full throttle, in which case, you know, my MPG is not going to be great. And on average, it's about 16 MPG for my 840. Right, well, we've seen the simulation. What's it like in real life? Oh, well, here we go, onto an intersection, second gear, 30 miles an hour. Change gear, it changed itself. 70, 80. There we go. That's a practical 
demonstration of that 3.15 to 1 differential ratio. So yeah, the gear's come at exactly the right time. Second brings you just over 60. And as you saw, I was in manual gear change then, so I put it into sports, then into second. Didn't touch the gear stick. Put my foot down, reached about 62. And of course we hit 5,500 RPM and it automatically changes gear. So 5,500 RPM, that is the long and short of it. You can't get any more than that. Up into third and uh, up to 80 miles an hour. Yeah, very comfortable, just the right sort of gear ratio. And also the gear ratio is fantastic for things like this. Right, what's it go like on the bends? Well, off we go, off the slip road, 60 miles an hour into some sharp corners. Hardly any body roll at all. I mean, look at that, it's actually straight as a die. Third gear, oodles of power to accelerate again, no need for second gear. So yeah, perfect. We can also look at the change in ratio another way. And to do that, I need my twin brother. Here he comes. Yeah, he's got exactly the same car, same colour and everything, but he's got a 2.81 to 1 ratio differential in it. How many revs you got, Tim? Yeah, he's got 2,000 RPM, and I've got 2,250. Here's an interesting thing. Who's using the most petrol? Because even though we're doing exactly the same work, I'm pushing this car through the air at the same speed as my twin brother. I'm using more fuel doing exactly the same work because my engine's turning over faster and it takes energy to rotate an engine. So that's why my fuel economy is slightly worse. And that's what it is. But the final thing is, that if I put my foot down now and keep in fifth gear, my car produces more power than my twin brother's. And that's because I'm further up the power curve. So let's, yeah, I'm ready. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Lost him, no trouble at all. Yeah, don't come back. Right, well, there we go then. I think we've bashed differentials to death. And we've shown that choosing the right ratio differential is very important. It's no good going for a higher ratio when you can't reach 60 miles an hour in second gear. You just spend too much time changing gears. And the bloke with the 3.15s going to overtake the one with the 3.64 before you even reach 16. And after that, you'll be up in fourth gear with the 3.64 as you head for 80. And that's a pretty long gear. And the 3.15 car will still be way ahead. So, yeah, you've got to box clever with differentials. Yep, where the differential accounts for about 50 or 60% of the performance increase in this car. And in part three, we'll go through the last thing that makes quite a bit of difference and increases the acceleration to six seconds, not to 60 on this car. Not only that, we'll go through a few things which don't cost you a penny and increases the performance of your car quite significantly. And it really does. And I'm not gonna give you any hints about it, but uh, they're quite obvious when you think about it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Bit foggy out today. And we're in lockdown, but it's busier than normal, that's very strange. Yeah, a bit of fog in the UK and uh, yep, yeah, everyone crawls along about two miles an hour. Road's clear.
third gear, not even going to stick it into second today, just to let the old torque pull us along.